Today we're going to be checking out the Home Power One Pro 1200 watt hour portable power station from Geniverse and their 200 watt solar panel. And we're going to be performing a handful of tests to see how well they perform. But before we dive in, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new here because we review all kinds of cool gadgets like this and we do a ton of giveaways on the channel. And we're getting close to the 30k subscriber mark and when we do, I've got a great giveaway planned. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. At the moment, the power station by itself sells for $1,299 or you can pick up the power station and the solar panel together as a kit for $1,898. The Home Power One Pro has a top-notch intelligent display which is going to give you a lot of information including estimated charging time and speed, the current remaining battery life as a percentage, the estimated remaining runtime, and the current output and input in watts. This is a pure sine wave inverter and there's seven outputs in total including three AC outputs which can support devices up to 2400 surge watts which is the vast majority of home appliances, two USB-A ports with an 18 watt max certified by Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 and two PD100 USB-C ports with a 100 watt max. There's also a cool white emergency light bar which has three different lighting modes including a low mode with a 3 watt output, a high mode with a 7 watt output, and an SOS mode as well. It also comes with one of the nicest cable organization pouches that I've seen from any portable power station and inside you'll get this AC charging cable and a car charging cable. Now we're going to jump into some testing to see if the Home Power One Pro can continuously run at the 1200 watt max output that it claims. We're going to plug in a bunch of different devices and try to push this power station to its limits. There was some times when the power station could sustain outputs over 1300 watts for a few minutes before the power station would shut off. This fully filled electric kettle would run for a few minutes and heat up quite a bit but ultimately it would shut off before the water had a chance to come to a full boil. I did find the max sweet spot we could consistently run at which I discovered by plugging in a variety of box fans, blower fans, and a small hair dryer and it was right around 1240 watts which was slightly higher than the 1200 watts stated. I did try running closer to the 1260 to 1280 range and it did shut off after a few minutes. Next we're going to test the true watt hour capacity of this power station and see how close it comes to the 1200 watt hour stated and this is a lithium iron phosphate battery rated for over 3000 charge cycles and in order to test the capacity we're going to run at about half the continuous output level at around 528 watts which will cause the internal fan to come on so it'll be a good test of how efficient this device really is and we've got this blower fan and a few box fans plugged in into this wall outlet style power meter and it's going to give us a measurement of the total watt hours at the end and something interesting I noticed while draining the battery is that it didn't actually go all the way down to zero percent and it's left with three percent and when you turn it back on the ac and the usb outputs are disabled but you can still turn on the light and the display the meter is reading 1011 watt hours which is just over 84 percent of the 1200 watt hours claimed however there was still a little bit of battery juice left over and the true cost per usable watt hours is going to be around one dollar and 28 cents another test i'd like to run on my power station is a fridge test and this test is pretty straightforward so what we're going to do is plug in the fridge into the power station and see how long it can run for and this might be important to you if you're worried about your food spoiling during a power outage after plugging the fridge in we continue to use the fridge and the freezer normally as we would throughout the day which included extended freezer openings and multiple fridge door openings and when the battery was depleted we were able to run for a total of eight hours and 12 minutes but if you're more disciplined about keeping the fridge and the freezer doors closed you could definitely squeeze a bit more runtime out of this setup to get a better idea of what kind of runtimes you might get from other household devices you can check out this chart that Geniverse put together and they did a great job breaking this down into different kitchen, bedroom, living room, and home office related devices. Now that we're down to a 3% charge, we're going to plug in the power station to the wall outlet and see how long it takes to charge up. On the back of the power station, there's a port cover and there's a pair of DC inputs and also an AC input, which is what we're going to be using for this test. And you can see on the display that the charging speed is actually incredibly fast, close to 830 watts, and it's giving us a 1.7 hour estimated charging time. And typically speaking, lithium iron phosphate batteries are significantly quicker to charge compared to lithium ion batteries. Anyways, I plugged it in at 1237 and it was fully charged by 228 p.m. So the total charge time was one hour and 51 minutes, which is very close to the estimated time. And considering the size of the battery, I was really impressed with these results. The last test we're gonna do on the power station is to see if this device has a UPS mode and whether or not it 
can be used as a backup battery for electronics. And right now this power station is plugged into the wall outlet and we've got a nice laptop here that we've taken the battery out and we're able to plug it in and it turns on just fine. Now that it's plugged in, we're gonna unplug the charger that's connected to the wall outlet. And when we do, we'll see if the computer dies or not. And as you can see, the laptop did remain on. So this device would work reasonably well as a battery backup for basic electronic devices. About a week ago, I compared this power station to a handful of other power stations. And if you wanna see that video, I'll post a link to that down below. And the most comparable power station that I tested would be BioLite's 1500. The Geniverse power station was slightly more affordable from a cost per watt hour perspective and significantly faster at charging. But one downside to the Geniverse power station is that it is quite larger and heavier, which you might not expect because it does have a lower watt hour capacity compared to BioLite's power station, which is lithium ion based. And the lithium ion faucet batteries are heavier and bulkier compared to lithium ion. So there is a bit of a trade off to this battery tech and the Geniverse power station is less portable as a result. On the positive side, lithium iron faucet batteries typically have substantially better performance and Geniverse claims that you should be able to get about 3000 charge cycles from this battery. So if you want a power station that will last you for years and hold up well to frequent use, Geniverse would be a good way to go. Geniverse also sent over their Solar Power 2, which is their 200 watt all weather IP67 rated panel. And this can also be purchased separately. And at the moment it's available for 629 on Geniverse's website. It comes in a nice padded zippered case and inside there's a 10 foot long 8 millimeter charging cable. The panel itself weighs 17.64 pounds and there's a carrying handle on top and it unfolds into four different sections and these panels are monocrystalline and made from a durable ETFE material which is far superior to PET. There's a port on the side of the panel where you can plug in the charging cable and then setting up the panel is very straightforward and quick and the adjustable kickstands do give you a nice range of options for finding an ideal angle to position the panel. So far I've had this panel in my possession for about three weeks and the best watt output I was able to record so far was just upwards of 140 watts, which is about 70% of the 200 watts that it claims. But I am optimistic that we can get this number to improve in future testing. So we'll see how it stacks up when it's compared with a bunch of other 200 watt panels in a future video. And if you're in the market for a portable solar panel, you can check out a database with my testing data from all of the panels that I've tested so far, ranging from five watts all the way up to 200 watts. And as more panels are tested, all of that data will be updated here. So be sure to check back in from time to time when you're ready to purchase a new panel. Up to four panels can be combined for ultra fast charging speeds. So in theory, this power station could be charged in roughly the same amount of time as being plugged into the wall outlet in under two hours. It would be great to hear your thoughts on this power station and solar panel plan in the comments below. And if you want to pick one up and help support my work, you can find links down in the description below.